Welcome. We've just installed solar panels on our house and I wanted to share the experience with you. So what motivated us to go solar? Well, first of all, no more electricity bills. Over the last 30 years, electricity prices have gone up by a factor of five for domestic users and the projection is that they will go up yet another factor of five over the next 30. So we want to get ahead of that curve. No more power outages. Well, we ha suffer a lot from power outages here, both from summer storms and also winter blizzards. Uh, and that derecho put us offline for over a week a couple of years ago. So being independent of the power grid seems to be a good idea. We're also concerned about our carbon footprint. And so by doing this, we end up with a zero carbon footprint. And of course, we would end up with an improved standard of living. Not only would we have more money to spend because we're not spending money on electricity bills, we're actually getting paid for some of this electricity. We're going to be able to crank up our air conditioning in the summer so we're pleasantly cool and also crank up the heat in the winter so we're toasty warm uh, without having a conscience about doing that. What we are trying to achieve here is complete energy security and our concept consists of four elements. The first element are the, the solar panels. They are our primary source of energy. We have a battery backup system that stores that energy so it can be used overnight. And we have the power grid to fill in any shortfalls in our energy supply. The power grid also acts as a temporary storage for any excess power that we generate. Plus if the power grid is not there, then we have a gas generator and put those together and we have energy security. Our first stage, which probably will not apply to you, is that we had to replace our roof. It was an old cedar shake roof which was in bad need of repair, so we figured we'd get that replaced at the same time as we put the solar panels on and do two jobs in one. The whole process took several days. They started on the right-hand side of the house over our so-called sunroom by stripping off the old cedar shakes. They then started to replace them with synthetic slate tiles. Now, cedar normally lasts about 10 to 15 years. Now, these synthetic slate tiles last up to 40 years. They're also more fireproof. If you look closely, there's a bunch of protrusions from the roof where they've piled up the tiles. Those are the estanchions which eventually we will mount the solar panels on. You can see them more clearly here on the left where the roof has been completed and they've covered them with a black plastic material. And there we are done front and back. It looks very nice. Stage two is installing the solar panel mounts and wiring. Here's our starting point. Now they start taking wires from each one of those stanchions to a nexus on the roof. I'll show you those more clearly at the end. On the left here you can see they've now started to install the rails on which solar panels will be directly mounted. Now here is the job complete. You can see the nexus where the power goes down from the roof to the charge controllers and inverters in the basement here. You can see it most clearly on the bottom right. Stage three is actually installing the solar panels. They started here on the left of the house, but once it was started, it went very, very quickly. This whole thing was done in less than a day. and it's done. Stage four is to turn it on and see how it works. So what do we need to do to power up? Well, first of all, we need to make sure the solar panels are working because that's our primary source of power. You need a charge controller to make sure that the batteries aren't overcharged and get damaged. You need a power inverter to change the DC current you get from the solar panels and from the batteries into AC current that you can use in your home. You need a control panel, which is basically the brains of the thing, to control the direction and flow of all the electricity. 
You need a battery system for storage. You need the mains power to act as a substitute when you aren't generating enough power and the batteries are too low. It also effectively acts as a storage mechanism because any excess power that you generate is pushed back into the mains. And you also need a local area network if you want to monitor all of this from your computer. Well, how does the system work? This is a picture of the main components of the system and here's the battery backup system just below it. Now, what does this comprise? Well, first of all, these are the two charge controllers which protect the batteries from overcharging. These are the two inverters that change the DC current into AC current and puts it into our mains system. And this is our control panel which monitors and directs all the energy. And of course, this is our battery system. This overall system is a 10 kilowatt system. So this is what I see on my computer. This, by the way, is on a bright sunny day with fairly cool temperatures, around about noon. So we're getting 7600 watts from the solar arrays, of which 6400 watts are being exported to the grid and being used by other people. The generator is off because we don't have any emergency situation. The battery is charging and using 300 watts to do so. And in the house we are using 1934 watts. Now you'll notice that all these numbers don't quite add up and the reason for that is that some of our electricity system is not on this backup system so if we're using power in any of those appliances or have any of those lights on the numbers will not sum to zero. You have to consider certain factors when it comes to the efficiency of the system. First of all is sun angle. From summer to winter there is a change of 47 degrees in the inclination of the sun and that affects the amount of energy that the solar panels will see. Similarly, throughout the day, uh, the angle changes. If your solar panels are facing south, they're most efficient at noon. Earlier in the day or later in the day, that angle increases and their efficiency drops. Throughout the year, therefore, the number of hours of daylight also changes. So, for example, in Washington DC, near where I live, you get something like five and a half hours more daylight in the peak of the summer than you do in the depths of winter. Clouds make a huge difference. A clear day you'll get a lot of energy, high clouds will a little less, thicker clouds will mean you'll get yet less, and very deep dark stormy clouds like we have today, almost nothing. Also the temperature of the uh, solar panels changes their efficiency. The hotter they are, the more resistance there is and the less efficient they are. Uh, so on a cold winter's day, you're liable to have a more efficient system than you are on a hot summer's day. So how did we do? This is the results for January 5th, 2015, our first day of operation. It was a clear sunny day with temperatures ranging from 14 degrees Fahrenheit to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. On the plot I've marked the time for sunrise and sunset and obviously at night we're not going to get any power from the system. So at most we're only going to get power for about 9 hours per day. The orange curve here shows the output of our solar array. It turned on about half an hour after sunrise reaching a peak at about 8,000 watts just after noon. And that's because our house is slightly facing to the west rather than directly south. The blue curve is our usage of grid power. Uh, so for most of the time when we didn't have solar power, we were using about half a kilowatt. As soon as the solar power turned on, that usage dropped and eventually went negative. So if you see the blue line above the zero, then we're taking power from the grid. And if you see the blue line below the zero line, i.e. in negative territory, we're sending power to the grid. Over the day, we generated a total of nearly 42 kilowatt hours of energy, and we exported nearly 28 kilowatt hours of that energy to the grid. So basically, in the one day of sunny weather, we generated enough power to compensate for three days worth of our normal energy usage. Today turns out to be a very dull overcast day, in fact it's raining off and on. But we're still generating quite a bit of power from our system, so it seems we'll be generating about as much power as we are using during the day. Earlier on I claimed we would have a higher standard of living, and this is how that works. First of all we would have no more electricity bills, in fact the electricity company will be paying us for the extra energy that we generate. We can also sell green energy tax credits, and we also get a tax credit for putting the system in, which is quite substantial. By the way, if you lease a system, you don't get those tax credits. The energy company gets the tax credits. 
It doesn't look as though we're going to have a zero carbon footprint, but we're going to have a negative one. So this means we can cool and heat the house as much as we like. So living conditions are going to be much more pleasant for us. And we might change some of our other systems that rely on natural gas or gasoline to be electric, such as an electric car, for example, which would make our carbon footprint even more negative. So are you considering going solar? There are some things you must consider when you do that. First of all, there are lease or buy options. We chose to buy our solar system. However, if you lease them, it's certainly a lot cheaper. That commits you to a long-term agreement with the leasing company, and you still end up with an electricity bill at the end of the month, albeit somewhat smaller. You should be very careful looking at the contract to see what it says about how much they can increase the price of the electricity to you per year. Sometimes it's quite substantial. Go with a reputable company. I talked to lots of people before I did this, and many of them obviously were just salesmen and didn't know what they were talking about. So what I did is I read up about this subject quite a lot and knew quite a bit about it before I talked to any of these folks and then asked them some questions. Often they couldn't answer them or answer them incorrectly. Size your system to fit your situation and needs. By that you don't need a system that's hugely more powerful than the amount of energy you're going to be using and your local environment might affect what size system is worth putting on your roof or whether you should go with the standalone system. For example, if you have overhanging trees, that will cut the efficiency of the system. Or if your house roof faces east-west, that means you're only going to get power half the day. So these are sorts of things you must consider before starting. You also have to watch out for local rules and regulations. Some states, like Maryland, have a rule that doesn't allow homeowners associations to interfere with you putting a solar panel system on your roof. Other states may not have such rules and check with your homeowners association if you're unfortunate enough to have one whether there are any particular rules or regulations that you need to follow that's it for today please follow me on twitter drkstrong bye for now